right, we are in 2.8 now, so let's take a look at some examples here. This is of absolute value functions. All right, so um, all we want to do here is we want to uh, graph. This is basically what we're doing here. We want to graph this. Um, so in order to graph this, you need to uh, basically make a table is the best way I can sit here and tell you to do it. So I'm going to plug in a negative 2 and a negative 1 and a 0 and a 1 and a 2. And the reason why I'm picking some positive and some negative points is for that very reason. You get some positive or negative points. What you need to remember is you have the absolute value. And absolute value means that anything you have will be positive. So, for example, when you plug in a negative 2, you end up getting negative 2 plus 3, which gives you the absolute value of 1, which is 1. Plug in a negative 1. You get negative 1 plus 3, which is 2. So the absolute value of 2 is 2 because absolute value means whatever's inside is always positive. 0 plus 3, you can just see that that's 3. 1 plus 3, you can see that that's 4. 2 plus 3, you can see that that's 5. So those are your points. What that means is um, this is a point right here, negative 2, 1. So that means I go over negative 2 and up 1 and put a point. Negative 1, 2 is a point, so I go over negative 1 and up 2. 0, 3 is a point, 1, 2, 3. 1, 4, 1, 4. 2, 5 is a point. Now, I already can tell you what you guys are going to do. You're going to sit there and go, oh, that's a straight line, but it's not. Absolute values are always in the shape of a V. All right? They're either down that way or they are down this way. And if they're down that way, it means there's a negative out in front. So I need to make a V out of this. Well, the point is I don't know where the bottom point is. So if I keep, if I put in a 3, you can probably tell that'll be a 6. So let's go with a negative 3. Because I need to make some more negative points here to see what I get. If I put in a negative 3, I end up getting a 0. Put in a negative 4, watch. What's a negative 4 plus 3? That's negative 1. What's the absolute value of negative 1? That's a 1. So if you notice, at negative 3, 0 is right here. Then at negative 4, it starts going back up. So now, if it's going back up, you can probably see how the trend is going to be. It's the same on both sides. See how it's going up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. And there is your V and your absolute value graph. Over here, 2 minus x. Once again, let's pick some points to plug in. I'll start with negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. 2 minus negative 2 is like saying positive 4. 2 minus negative 1 is like saying positive 3. 2 minus 0 is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. 2 minus 2 is 0. So when I plug these in, that's like saying negative 2, 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 2, 4, negative 1, 3, 0, 2, 1, 1, and 2, 0. Now once again, I have no idea if that's the bottom point or not. So obviously if I plug in more negative numbers, if I plugged in a negative 3, you can probably guess it'll be up here. So let me try plugging in a positive 3. Well, 2 minus 3 is negative 1, and the absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1. So as you can see, at 3, it starts to go up again. So let me just follow that trend. So it goes up, and there is your V for this one. OK, a graph like this still works the same. Let's plug in some points, right? Let's plug in some points. I'm going to plug in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So if I plug in a negative 2, minus 2, absolute value of that is like saying the absolute value of negative 4, which is 4. So really what this is saying is what's 3 minus 4? That's negative 1. So now let's try plugging in a negative 1. Negative 1 minus 2 is saying negative 3. And the absolute value of negative 3 is 3, so this is saying what's 3 minus 3? zero. If I plug in a zero, zero minus two is negative two. And the absolute value of negative two is two, so three minus two is one. You can already see a trend here, right? Negative one, zero, one. I guarantee when you plug in the one without doing the math, but I'll do it here one last time for you. 
1 minus 2 is negative 1. The absolute value of negative 1 is 1. So 3 minus 1 is 2. You can see the trend. So I guarantee you, if you were to guess, it's going up 1 every time, so that'll be 3. So just so you can see, this is like saying the first point is negative 2, 1. That means I go, or sorry, negative 2, negative 1. So I go over negative 2 and down 1. Then I go over negative 1 and up 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 3. Now you can see the trend. If I keep going positive, it's going to keep going up. But what about negative, right? So what I mean is, let's try plugging in a negative 3. If I plug in a negative 3, what do I get? So negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. And the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. So really, I end up getting a, a negative 2 there. So that is over 1, 2, 3, and down 2. Still going down, so it doesn't help me at all. Let's try plugging in a negative 4. So I plug in a negative 4. Negative 4 minus 2 is uh, negative 6, but I want the absolute value, so that's 6. 3 minus 6. 3 minus 6 is negative 3, so that's like saying I go down 1, 2, uh, 3, 4, and over 1, 2, 3. So still going down. Still going down. Okay, so I need to make some more space here. And oh, I just lost all those points. <laughs> but um, what did I say? Negative 4, 1, 2, 3. These are all the points that I had so far. Okay. But anyway, um, now let's try negative 5. When I plug in a negative 5, I'm getting negative 7 and the absolute value of negative 7. All right, so th the point I'm getting at here is uh, it keeps going down. It's not going to go back up. So I need to try the other side. So let's try the positive numbers again. What's 3 minus 2? That is 1. The absolute value of 1 is 1, and 3 minus 1 is 2. So when I plugged in a positive 3, I got 2 as my answer. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Well, look, that's where it started to go back down. So in all honesty, I thought it was going down this way, but no, it's not. And here's how I can tell it's not. You could rewrite this as the negative absolute value of x minus 2 plus 3. And because that's negative, that means it's going down. It's making a down v. So that means the graph should be going down in this problem. And there is your V, if I could connect all the lines. And there we go. Um, so when I come back here, I will finish up uh, some more graphs of absolute values.